Well, as the, the UN tries to broker a peaceful solution to the Syrian crisis, uh, Washington and its allies are still backing just one side of the conflict. The anti-Assad opposition expects even wider recognition and funding from the US-led, quote, Friends of Syria group. The UK has already vowed to extend material support to the rebels. Let's try and get some more details on this now from Marty's uh, Laura Smith standing by in London. Joining us on the program, uh, Laura, so while the UN's uh, trying to get the warring sides in Syria to sit down for talks, Britain is backing the insurgency. Why is that? Well, it seems that this is the general consensus that backing the insurgency is the thing to do. As you mentioned, uh, the, the, the U.S. is doing it too. This, this money that, uh, that, that the U.K. has pledged amounts to uh, $800,000, and it re represents a doubling of the uh, funding that's being given to the opposition. Uh, we're expecting other countries to follow suit, including the U.S., uh, at a 71-nation uh, meeting on Sunday, which, as you mentioned, uh, it's a group that calls itself uh, the Friends of Syria. This is the second meeting that they've had uh, and in fact it seems from their agenda that uh, they are not in fact Friends of Syria, they are in fact Friends of the Syrian Opposition. Algerian relatives of Toulouse gunman Mohamed Marat are in disbelief and express doubts over his Al-Qaeda links. Marat was killed by police after a 30-hour standoff last Thursday. Relatives of Mohamed Mera, the gunman from Toulouse who killed seven people in France this month, live in the dusty hamlet of Bezaz in Algeria. Mera's parents were born in Algeria and he would travel to the country for visits. His close relatives say they are shocked at what took place. His uncle, Abdelkader Mera, says he is struggling to understand what pushed the 24-year-old to kill. I don't understand anything in this affair. It's a big mistake. This boy completely changed after being put in prison. He was brainwashed there. His mind was affected by his time in jail. We don't understand what happened. Mohamed Mera was killed by police after a 30-hour standoff last Thursday. He had confessed to the killing of three soldiers and days later, Jewish schoolchildren and a rabbi. Some cousins are doubtful over what the French police has said about Mera, especially about his links to Al-Qaeda. Everything they say about Mohammed Mera is rubbish. He's just 23. How could he go to Afghanistan and Pakistan? It's impossible. Relatives are also calling for Mera to be buried in Algeria, in the same cemetery where other family members were laid to rest. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, March 30th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube is ddarko2012, ddarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. This uh, first article I have up is in relation to uh, the French shooter story, because it just, like every other lone gunman story, um, usually the media will do what it, it's supposed to do, which is to give out false uh, information purposefully, it's called misinformation, they act as if, oh, we didn't have all the facts, but they don't really care. So um, as long as it promotes the war on terror. So French gunman uh, Marat may have been a government informant, says newspapers, I've covered this uh, what, on Wednesday, saying that he may have been an informant for France's intelligence services. Then as a result of this lone gunman who was not tied to Al-Qaeda, who, according to his family, would have never done that. Uh, possibly had an accomplice, just like the Afghan lone gunman. French police swoop nets uh, Islamist militant suspects. I don't like that headline, but it, either way, it says that uh, it was part of an investigation to French groups that are considered extremists and could pose a threat to the states. So it says here that after days of speculation they would be buried in Algeria, it says here the French gunman was finally laid to rest in France, and it goes on and it says that the gunman was finally buried in France on Thursday, the same day that Algeria refused to receive his body, and just hours after the mayor of the city in France had called for a delay, saying a funeral there would be inappropriate. And then it goes on and says that Algeria refused to accept his body on security grounds. So it's kind of a weird twist to it. 
Another weird twist is this pregnant women to marry a dead soldier. So President Sarkozy has personally approved a posthumous uh, wedding between one of the victims of the Toulouse gunman, uh, Marat, and his pregnant partner. Police discover firearms in U.S. Embassy van in Bolivia. And I don't know if you remember me covering a story about the president, Morales, in Bolivia, uh, recently stated that he would shut down the American embassy in La Paz if Washington continued to interfere in Bolivia's internal affairs. So basically trying to get a little false flag going on there in the Bolivian embassy. So it's here, MKO, a terrorist group, is U.S.'s only hope to stop Iran's nuclear program, says New York ex-mayor Giuliani. And uh, moving down here, it says, I have a feeling that the only thing that will stop Iran and the only thing that will stop Ahmadinejad is uh, if they see strength, if they see power, if they see determination, if they see uh, an America that is willing to support the people that want to overthrow the regime of Iran. He's talking about the Mujahideen uh, terrorist organization. Yeah, that's right. And uh, moving down here, just wait on the computer here, it says here that uh, it's part of uh, – 49 other groups, including Al-Qaeda, on the U.S. State Department's list of foreign terrorist organizations. He's not the only individual to be calling for this, so just so you know. Uh, Iran recently was doing a little exercise. Yeah, that's right. And it says here, they uh, after they assassinated the leader of the Gaza PRC a few weeks ago, it was basically to deliberate, uh, deliberately provoke a Gaza missile barrage, which then, which then allowed them to test their Iron Dome system. Next up, we have America firing off their own little system here. It says uh, a laser or um, basically directed energy weapons from the United States National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. So I go in there and check that out. Then Flashpoint Caucuses, Israel's secret staging ground. They're talking about Azerbaijan. It goes on here and talks about a memo that was released by WikiLeaks. Quotes, the president of Azerbaijan is describing his country's relationship with the Jewish state as an iceberg. Nine-tenths of it is below the surface. Remember, they just sent them or sold them some weapons, Israel that is. U.S. hoping Turkey will reduce imports from Iran. So the ambassador to Turkey says Washington expects Ankara to abide by the recent sanctions on Iran and significantly reduce its oil imports. So other countries like uh, India and them aren't even really complying with that. So it says here, uh, Greek-Israeli energy access. Three countries agreed to enhance their cooperation. They agreed on Wednesday to deepen their energy cooperation and discovery of considerable reserves of hydrocarbons in the Israeli and Cypriot exclusive economic zones, or blocks, as they call it. Then moving on, Greece joins Israel, USA, military exercise in southern Mediterranean. So they're just going there to uh, secure their oil reserves, right, or energy reserves. Five killed in U.S. drone strike in Yemen. So I don't know if you remember me. In the last set of videos, I covered some uh, news in Yemen saying that that was basically uh, next on the docket saying what here's some of the headlines u.s envoy claims iran helps yemeni rebels uh rebels so kind of some propaganda right then malnutrition increasing in some parts of yemen so get ready for a humanitarian corridor and bombs to be dropped on the uh, yemenis then yemenis stage anti-regime protests because well they're still um remnants of the old regime still in there uh, yemeni soldiers rebel against the generals of the army so people know what's up over there and it says here, Saudi deputy consul kidnapped in southern Yemen. That's right. So he's visiting, and he was kidnapped. So a lot of stuff going on there, and they got high prices and stuff like that. So it's, uh, like I said, it, you could see some, some more news on Yemen. Arab Spring brings steep rise in U.S. attacks in, uh, in Yemen. At least 26 U.S. military and CIA strikes involving cruise missiles, aircraft, drones, or any other form of killing has taken place in the volatile Gulf nation to date, killing hundreds of alleged militants linked to uh, the government's own terrorist network, Al-Qaeda, but at least 54 civilians have died, too. Moving on here, and that's really good for public relations and, and relations with other countries, too, like in Pakistan. Pentagon, all U.S. elite commandos in Mali are accounted for. So the Pentagon confirms that they do have special uh, operation forces personnel in the country, and they've seized all activity, i.e. regime change. So if they don't use terrorist groups, then they just go ahead and use their special forces groups. Mali coup and new step towards global resources grabs, and they're talking about in Africa between China, the east, and the west. Of battling over uh, Africa's re, uh, resources. 
Amphibious landing drill joint U.S.-South Korean forces. The U.S. and South Korean troops staged an amphibious landing operation as part of a joint military maneuver. It took place on Thursday, and around 13,000 U.S. sailors and Marines are taking part in the drill, along with 2,000 South Korean military personnel. This is about uh, basically securing the Asian trading economic bloc, uh, make sure that China is, uh, is on board with it. So we have here Sweden, Finland to take part in NATO's Baltic airspace exercise. So NATO forces will hold its 11th airspace policing exercises uh, in the Baltic skies on March 27th and 28th in conjunction with Finnish and Swedish air forces. Now, why is this important? Well, let's check this out. NATO member nations should share military systems. Oh, great idea. So it says here these phantom jet fighters under NATO controlled streaked off the runway at the former Soviet air base in Lithuania this week in response to a report that an aircraft had lost communications as it neared Finnish airspace. But it was all an exercise, a simulation. But it goes on here and it says, uh, with one point beyond mere rehearsal, NATO officials hope that at a summit in Chicago this May, which was supposedly canceled because uh, they were scared about uh, all the protesters that were going to rain down on them. But I don't know. Apparently, Rahm Emanuel uh, just stocked up on a bunch of helmets and riot gear. So I guess they're, they got the green light with it. Member nations will put aside concerns over sovereignty and agree in principle to create joint defense capabilities. So kind of like AFRICOM, NORTHCOM. North American Union. U.S. blames China, Russia for cyber espionage. Says China and Russia are using cyber espionage to steal U.S. trade and technology secrets to bolster their. Russia accuses West over cybersecurity. Western uh, special services are trying to compromise Russia's cybersecurity. An Army General, uh, First Deputy Director of the Federal Security Services from Russia, said on Tuesday. So, Russia is considering setting up a dedicated cybersecurity command responsible for protecting the armed forces information systems, which may be true, but I think in the long run, uh, they end, they're all one big intelligence uh, information sharing uh, agency. So, Georgia and World Bank signed uh, financing and loan agree agreements as today, well, it's not really today, but March 22nd. The financing and loan agreements of the project of maintenance, rehabilitation of internal and local roads were signed between Georgia and the World Bank. The total cost is 70 million U.S. dollars. Then we have IMF to allocate 390 million dollars to Georgia if necessary. So the IMF mission and Georgia government have reached an agreement on 24-month program and credit lines and credit mechanisms to be allocated to Georgia. Minister EU mission in Georgia contributes to preserving peace in the region. So defense. Minister thanked the mission member for providing the international community with objective information about the situation in the country, i.e. giving up their sovereignty again. EU, U.S. refused to recognize elections in South Ossetia. And the high representatives reiterate their support for territorial integrity and sovereignty of Georgia as recognized by international law. Medvedev of Russia says military to counter the U.S. military shields in the Europe and that. Japan prepares for North Korean rocket launch. And the only reason they're doing this is because, well, they're in the West and they're European Illuminati's hands. So they just say, okay. Kind of goes in line with this. Obama makes slip on open mic. Was it a slip? I don't know. You never know when these things are plants. But we know these guys are both puppets, right? This is my last election. After my election, I'll have more flexibility. So we kind of already knew that he was probably going to get reelected just based off the Republican uh, elections and that. But some of the Republican neocons will criticize him for, you know, oh, we can't be trusted with sec uh, secrets and all that. Well, it's a big game. Remember this? U.S. Russia resetting the reset button, right? So they're going to have the reset button, which means they're going to reset the uh, the nuclear race or the arms race or the basically the Cold War again. They're going to start it again. So this is what it's all about. In the end, I basically see Russia uh, becoming up, uh, basically becoming stronger out of this. But that's the point. So, can the BRICS create a new world order? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa seek a multipolar world, but some argue they're bound by anti Americanism. So, again, it's just the crap that they put out there anti Americanism. They all probably are part of uh, some kind of global uh, roundtables in that, so private uh, decision making. Australian globalist Senator Bob Brown calls for world government. The world should be ruled by a new global parliament under the auspice of the United Nations. So the trick is is what? Is that it's already in place. Just the people, the taxpayers, they, they aren't aware of it yet, the voters. UN policy paper outlines seven building blocks for heavy-handed world government. And when you go down there, the first one is what? Ooh, consolidating global agencies.
integrating sustainable development to the local level, i.e. Agenda 21, bringing emerging technologies under global control. They're talking, they're talking about geoengineering, i.e. chemtrails, but I think they're talking about the internet right there. Lastly, the creation of a global legal and economic framework. Canada, Mexico, U.S. enhanced defense cooperation, so they use it as defense, security, and the economy. And beyond the border, a shared vision of security and the economy.